Hey Internet and welcome to my tutorial for web code on solving client-side input. So in this video I'm going to run through on how I'm going to or how I go about security testing a uh, web application and modifying client-side input. I'll be using WebGoad to demonstrate this. So WebGoad is an intentionally vulnerable web application. You can read about it on OWASP's main site. OWASP is the developer of WebGoat. And what I'll be doing is I'll be using a standalone Ubuntu server to run WebGoat. If you're interested in how to do that, I'll post this site below in the link. But it's fairly straightforward. You'll just do a apt get update, and then you'll install the default JRE. And then from there, you'll basically do a wget on WebGoat. So just basically you use sudo command, sudo apt git update, and then I've already done all of this, I've already ran the command wget, and once you do all that, you should see webgoat in your home directory, and I'll start it using the java jazz jar command to execute the uh, jar file. And I'm, in this case, I'm specifying a server port and server address. Uh, these fields are optional, so uh, you can leave those out if you just wish to run it on the default port and local host. So while that's starting, we'll hop over to my Kali Linux machine and we will start up the Firefox browser. And once that server boots, which normally takes about 20 seconds. So yeah, 21 seconds, it's booted up. What we'll do is we'll just plug in that IP address and then we'll go the port that we specified and then we'll go slash web goat. So when you first log in the web goat, you'll need to register a new user. It's straightforward. Since I've already done that, I'm going to log in with my test user. And from there, I'll get to see the challenges. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to solve one of the client side challenges and I'm going to solve the HTML tampering challenge. And WebGoat's kind enough to kind of give a concept and the goal of the challenge. So you can show hints if you want to. And what we'll do is we'll come to this page here and this is where the actual challenge is. So taking a look at it, there's not a lot going on in this page. We got a price, total, quantity. We got a remove button, continue shopping, checkout button. Clicking these will send uh, HTTP requests, but uh, nothing happens. And we get a message out here saying, hey, it's too expensive. Let's try to lower the price. OK, so let's try to do that. We'll click F12 to open up our developer console. And in the developer console, we got this inspector tool. And to the left of that, we got an element selector. So let's go ahead and try to select these elements. And let's try to modify them. So if I just say modify this to one dot zero zero, right? And I go through and I, I modify all these values. So again with this, and I'll modify this. Come on. Seems to be very stubborn. So selecting enter, modifying everything. Not going to bother with the shipping cost. That was already zero. And once we get down to the total amount here, let's go ahead and try to modify this. And then let's go ahead and try to check out. Okay, I haven't gotten anything. If we go remove, it says data tampering is not allowed. Okay, 
Well, that's not going to stop us. Let's keep trying to play with with this website. So it looks like it reset all the values. Didn't get our cheaper price. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual request on the network tab. And if we clear this out, and if we say checkout, right, we're interested in what that request looks like. So here we see it's too expensive. This is our response. We try to submit our post request and um, it was too high. So if we look at this and if we look under headers, there is an edit and resend option. So let's go ahead and edit that. And we can see that there's a request body where the total price is given. So if we change that to 1.00, and then let's say we leave the request headers. We could, you know, theoretically modify these, but that's not necessary. Um, and then let's keep the method and URL the same, and let's go ahead and click send. Okay, so here's our uh, here's our request, and let's go ahead and double click on it, and we can see our response, and it looks like we were successful. We bought a TV at a discount. So we can see we complete the challenges. And what the overall goal of this lesson was to basically show that you should never trust client-side input. If the client is sending information, you should verify that using the server. So using a database calculation, looking up the price again. So for example, uh, this TV, the unit price should be this so if somebody so if they're sending a quantity of like say two and it's coming out to still be less then that request should be rejected that's how you do it in the actual world um so yeah that's uh one of the ways uh to prevent something like this from happening and if you're interested in http requests mozilla's own website has references on the HTTP request methods. And I'm hoping to post in my blog a more thorough discussion around these methods and modifying them and how to basically circumvent um, or, or modify data going to a server. So more to come on this, but I just kind of want to show a basic run through of how I went about solving one of WebGhost's challenges without looking anything up just really just playing around with it and hopefully this has given you a lot of benefit um, hopefully you attempted this yourself before looking at my solution but in the future don't be afraid to just take an element selector look through the dom modify things and eventually you'll stumble upon a security flaw so hope this was helpful and thank you for watching